Michael Craig there. Now, the U.S. Defense Secretary Robert Gates is promising a criminal investigation into how documents about the Afghan crisis ended up on the anonymous WikiLeaks website. America's top military official suggested those behind the leaks may already have blood on their hands. But the WikiLeaks founder, Julian Assange, has denied his actions have caused harm, says the material was offered to the White House for vetting first. In a moment, we'll debate how far freedom of speech should go with Heather Brook, whose work with the Freedom of Information Act exposed the MP's expenses, and the hacker, Adrian Lamo, who reported the soldier who made contact with him to the authorities. First reminder of just how heated the words at the top have now got. Mr. Assange can say whatever he likes about the greater good he thinks he and his source are doing. But the truth is, they might already have on their hands the blood of some young soldier or that of an Afghan family. Disagree with the war all you want. Take issue with the policy. Challenge me or our ground commanders on the decisions we make to accomplish the mission we've been given. But don't put those who willingly go into harm's way even further in harm's way just to satisfy your need to make a point. We contacted the White House uh, as, a, as a group uh, before we released this material and asked them to help assist in going through it um, to make sure that no innocent names came out uh, and the White House did not uh, accept that request. We uh, did not offer them uh, an, a, ch a chance to, to veto uh, any material but rather we told them we were going through a harm minimization process and uh, offered them the chance to point out names uh, of informers um, or other innocents uh, who might be harmed. And uh, they de uh, did not respond uh, to that request. Julian Assange uh, ending there. Now, I'm joined in the studio by Heather Brook, the Freedom of Information campaigner, and from Sacramento, California, by Adrian Lamo, who recently caused controversy by exposing a U.S. Army intelligence analyst as the alleged source for recently leaked documents. Thanks uh, to you both for joining me this evening. Um, Heather, what, there is now a criminal investigation and there are allegations that that website has hurt people. Blood on their hands. That's the not is. actually the allegation. The alle allegation is that they may and they might. And I think that's really crucial is that this is, this is all speculative harm that's being um, talked about. And What's not being talked about, uh, what seems to be being ignored, is the actual harm, and that's what has been exposed through, these, uh, through this leak. So I think that's important for us to, to think about in, in freedom of speech, is are we going to restrict speech based on actual harm or speculative harm? And the problem is if we're, if we're going to start censoring based on speculative harm, then you, you, you know, human imagination can speculate on anything. I could speculate that harm could result um, from saying sure, pretty sure. much anything. Yeah, I, I get your point. Okay, uh, let's ask Adrian Lamo what you make of that. Why did you report Private Manning? Well, if you'll give me a moment, I would like to respond to the prior statement. Um, certainly, um, there is speculative harm there, but uh, there, and it, indeed, there can be speculative harm from a number of quarters. However, there is a very real risk that has been articulated by the president of Afghanistan, by the Obama administration, saying explicitly this, these leaks articulate the identities of uh, people who sure. are colluding, assisting, and aiding the coalition forces. And these people are most likely going to be targets for reprisals. I mean, and these reprisals are not going to be mild. These reprisals are going to be a bullet to the head. Heather Brook, you, you did it, if you like, the right way. You went through the channels. You went through the Freedom of Information Act. You got what you wanted. Can you not see that this is a far more dangerous, precarious way of gathering information? I think there's two points. Um, 
The problem is that the people deciding, the, the Pentagon wants to have the monopoly on deciding what information is dangerous or not. And uh, on the one hand, we might think, well, that's right that they should do so. But they also have an incentive to cover up information that would show up their mistakes. So they're not an impartial judge. They do have their own interests, which sometimes can clash with the wider interests of the public. As, as far as my investigation with MPs, and, and this was a similar situation in some way where MPs, some of, some of the excuses they used to try and keep that information secret was about national security. And I think we can all see, looking back on that exposure, that it wasn't about national security at all. It was about covering up mistakes, covering up corruption, covering up embarrassment. So we, ha I, we need to sort of find a better balance of, uh, and maybe be a bit more skeptical that there is a danger of so much information is going to be classified that it basically degrades the mm. quality of secrecy. A Adrian Lama, how did it make you feel? Did it make you feel patriotic when you turned Manning in? It made me feel very sad that I could not have interdicted this leak prior to it being sent to WikiLeaks. I, I really and truly wish that it could have been prevented prior to it being put out into the public domain. But you don't know, you don't know what was in all that stuff. I mean, it happened so quickly. You can't have read everything in 90,000 pages before you decided what you decided. You're absolutely right. I could not have read 90,000 pages and neither could Julian Assange and his cohorts. And in fact, the allegation that he has engaged in a harm minimization process is negated by the fact that the identities of informants in Afghanistan are being revealed by these leaks. But I think if we're going to just talk about what might happen, uh, we could equally say that uh, there was a problem in Britain where some informant, they were uh, interpreters in Iraq. and. They, the government, the British government had an agreement with them that they would protect them for the work they'd done, and in fact, they they didn't. And the Times newspaper found out yeah. about that, and it was only from uh, publishing those stories that the informants actually did get some level of protection. But, so. Okay, but that you know that proves your point. But but where would you draw the line? Is there no line you would ever draw about freedom of speech? There is, but I think. W w John Stuart Mill would say uh, incitement to violence or actual harm, and I think those are the key, the key concepts that uh, my right to free speech ends where I'm actually endangering somebody else, and, and there has to be some sort of provable harm that could happen, and it cannot just be in the imagination or in the mind of somebody. Okay. Thank you both very much indeed. Thank you. I'm so sorry we've run out of time, but uh, in a moment, a look at tomorrow's papers. First, a roundup of today's news.